Today, Intel is a multi-billion dollar business pulling in 62.76 billion US dollars of revenue in 2017. They employ over 100,000 people and they own smaller companies like McAfee and Altera. They have everything from a simple G4560 dual core processor for just under $60 all the way to their Xeon 8180 28 core CPU for $11,000. But where exactly did this company come from and how exactly did they come to dominate the CPU market? But before we jump into that, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys would like to see more origin stories just like this one. So starting off, Intel Corporation was founded on July 18, 1968 by two semiconductor pioneers, Gordon Moore and Robert Noyce. And it is often associated with the vision of Andrew Grove. Robert Noyce had actually co-founded another semiconductor chip company named Fairchild Semiconductor in 1957. Today, Fairchild also just barely breaks the billion dollar revenue mark and was acquired by Owen Semiconductor in 2016 for a cool $2.4 billion in cash. But Intel wouldn't have been possible with just Robert Noyce. Arthur Rock, who was actually the chairman of Intel and a major investor in the company, actually believed that for Intel to succeed as a company, Robert Noyce, Gordon Moore, and Andrew Grove had to make the dream team. Noyce was the man with the vision and source of inspiration, and Moore and Grove were the men with the brains to make it a reality. Well, once these men got together, they went straight to work. First, what should they name it? They actually named it Anim Electronics, but soon changed it just a month later. They ended up taking the words integrated and electronics and combined them to make Intel. The men founded Intel in Mountain View, California and put in a whopping $2.5 million into it. In just two years, Intel went public and raised $6.8 million at $23.5 a share. Intel actually started off making RAM before jumping on into the CPU space. Their first product was the 3101 Scott Key TTL Bipolar, which was super compact yet impressive in speed. In fact, it was twice as fast as the RAM that existed at the time made by Fairchild. However, Intel didn't stop there. In that same year, Intel came out with ROM or read-only memory and MOSFET or Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Eventually, Intel learned from these products and eventually came out with a DRAM, or Dynamic Random Access Memory, which eliminated many of the issues with the previous generations in 1970. Intel continued to bring out remarkable products like the first commercially available microprocessor in 1971 and one of the first microcomputers in 1972. However, by 1983, Intel was losing steam and their business heavily depended on DRAM and increased competition from Japanese semiconductor manufacturers did not help the problem. Eventually, Gordon Moore, the CEO at the time, realized that Intel should focus on building microchips due to the high success of IBM personal computers, which were based on Intel's microprocessors. Once Intel changed their vision going forward, they experienced a crazy boom throughout the 80s which boosted Intel from being a primary hardware supplier to becoming the most profitable hardware supplier to the PC industry. Intel was able to build a great brand for loyalty and were able to make Pentium a household name by the end of 1990. This exponential growth continued into the 90s with dozens of commercials and the boom of Windows. Intel ended the 90s with $29.4 billion in revenue in 1999. However, Intel had some trouble sustaining their growth into the new millennium. Intel had been facing some of those issues for a while now and the new century just brought more challenges with it. In the US, intellectual property rights related to circuit layouts wasn't actually protected until 1984 after the Semiconductor Chip Protection Act of 1984. Intel tried to take advantage of this new law and begin suing other companies who tried to develop competitor chips to the 8386 CPU. However, in most cases, these legal battles dragged on for some time and Intel had to deal with cumbersome legal bills. On top of this, Antitrust allegations had been raising issues for Intel since the early 1990s and this actually led to one lawsuit against Intel in 1991. Going back to the early 2000s, demand for high-end microprocessors had stalled and good competition began to rise, most notably from AMD. At first, AMD only challenged Intel in the low-end and mid-range processors, but soon enough, 
they were a serious threat to Intel's whole CPU lineup. AMD was able to pick up a lot of market share and Intel's dominant position was greatly reduced. Craig Barrett, who was a CEO at this time, was aware of such issues and attempted to diversify Intel beyond semiconductors, but alas, most of these died in vain. However, after getting a new CEO named Paul Ottolini, Intel was able to slowly regain their position. In 2005, Paul reorganized the company in order to better serve niche markets. He created the divisions Enterprise, Digital Home, Digital Health, and Mobility. In 2006, Intel came out with their core microarchitecture and this provided a significant performance upgrade and helped Intel regain its glorious position. Intel knew they had to focus on the CPU market and so they announced that they were going to sell S-scale assets. Marvel Technology Group acquired this for $600 million that same year. Then, in 2008, Intel brought out the Penrin architecture based on the 45 nanometer process and later that same year, they introduced Nekalem which also had really great feedback. Meanwhile, Intel became greedy again and tried to expand. In 2008, SpectraWatt, which was a solar star company, fell from bankruptcy in just 3 years. However, their CPU sales were doing great and with the reduced competition from AMD, Intel continued to innovate until the 2700K which came out in 2011. By this point, Intel had reclaimed their dominance in the CPU market and there wasn't much competition from AMD or anyone else really. Intel was simply the go-to option for PC enthusiasts or even simple laptop or desktop buyers due to Intel's various marketing techniques, brand loyalty, and of course, superior performance. The next couple of years, Intel cruised through CPU launches simply adding a little speed to processors year after year while making some smart acquisitions like Caffey and Infineon in 2010, Altera in 2015, Mobileye in 2017, and many many more. While Intel received some backlash from the community for stopping innovation, Intel's sales were still rocketing so they didn't seem to worry much. However, in 2017, AMD's introduction of Ryzen showed many PC enthusiasts what value was possible and this stole a lot of Intel's market share in just a few months. Eventually, Intel rushed their release of Coffee Lake which led to stock shortage and more controversy about if Intel would have released those chips if AMD hadn't brought in some competition. Today, it is still widely conversed about what Intel is going to do next and if Intel is going to finally bring an octa-core processor to the mainstream platform this year. Intel still has market dominance, but they may not in the imminent future if they continue to lose market share as rapidly as they are right now. So what happens next? Make sure to post down in the comments below what you guys expect in, for Intel in the future and also comment down below what company's origin you want me to cover next. Also, make sure to hit that like button if you guys found this video fun and informative and don't forget to subscribe. But until next time.